We've all been waiting for the inflection point where the housing market starts to change and turn around. Well, I believe that inflection point is now as we're starting to see many of the key data points that looked like they were never gonna turn around actually start to turn around in terms of inventory, in terms of days on market, in terms of how many price cuts we're seeing, lots of different stuff. So of course, I'm gonna give, keep you guys updated on all this. Also give you some reasons of why I think this stuff is happening. So here's the deal. Mortgage rates have been coming down, but the buyers haven't been jumping back in, okay? And Redfin even recently made a report on this about how you know they're seeing an uptick in foot traffic and stuff like that, but they're not seeing an uptick in contracts getting signed. In fact, we're seeing the amount of cancellations of contracts go way up right now. So right now, as of the latest July figures, the seasonally annually adjusted uh, home sales is sitting at 3.95 million. Okay, this is horrible, guys. We have not seen numbers anywhere near this bad since at least the last housing crash, okay? It's very, very bad. When you take a look at this chart here, all the way to the right is where the home sales are at right now. And you can see how much they peaked up during the pandemic. But prior to that, you can see it was pretty stable. It was pretty normal to have anywhere between five and five and a half million home sales happening per year. Now we are under four. That's how unaffordable real estate has become and how few buyers are jumping into the market right now. In fact, when we just look at the July numbers alone, we can actually see some very startling data. You know, the home sales in July 2024 are 2.5% lower than they were in 2023, but they're 19.1% lower than they were in 2022. They're 34.5% lower than they were in 2021. They're 26.7% lower than in 2019 and 2018. Because remember, July should basically be the last peak month of the housing market. You know, usually March, April, May, June, July, those are the big months for sales in real estate because it's the spring and summer housing market. Now, kids are going back to school in August. Things start to taper down from here. And here's the thing, 2023 was already the worst year on record when it comes to home sales. And July home sales in 2024 were 2.5% lower than that. So it looks like 2024 is set to be the next worst year ever. And this is all happening while inventory continues to climb on the U.S. housing market. According to the National Association of Realtors, we have 1.33 million homes on the market, which is the highest amount since October of 2020. And if you take a look at this chart, guys, you can see just how much supply of homes has gone up in 2024. You know, we had some run up in 2023, but 2024, makes 2023 look like nothing. In fact, we are basically at pre-pandemic levels of existing home supply on the market. It's almost there. You know, the blue line kind of marks the historical average. We recently just ticked up above that. Now, of course, you can see pre-pandemic as the market ebbs and flows during the height of the spring and summer market, it does go higher than that up to about four and a half, sometimes even close to five months supply of homes but we're already at four. And I think you're gonna see this number continue to climb, especially into 2025, because you have all this unsold inventory, people that tried to sell houses this year, couldn't get the price they wanted, like, oh, we'll wait till next year, it'll be better by then. They're gonna have lower interest rates, everyone's gonna come back. And I think everyone who's thinking that is going to be disappointed and they're not gonna be getting that higher number that they were hoping for next year because you and everyone else will be trying to do the same thing simultaneously and we're gonna see far more supply than we're even seeing right now, which will definitely put the pressure on prices to come down even further. Already this year, we're seeing a 36.5% increase in inventory year over year, according to realtor.com, and you can expect that number to grow in 2025. And a lot of people say, well, this isn't happening in my area, it doesn't apply to me. Well, it's happening to a lot of areas, guys. You know, realtor.com, they track the 50 largest metros. I'm not gonna put them all up here on the screen, but you can see, you know, in descending order here for like the first 20 or so of them, how much active listings are up year over year. Tampa takes the cake at 95%. Year over year, we also have Orlando right underneath it, San Diego, Denver, Seattle, Jacksonville, Miami, 
Phoenix, you got San Jose, Charlotte, Atlanta, Dallas, Raleigh, Memphis, Sacramento, and the list goes on from there. And all of these places on the first half of this list have year-over-year -year inventory spikes higher than the national average of 36.5%. The lowest one on this list is 45%. You're starting to see what happened, exactly what I said was gonna happen, in that the active inventory supply continues to grow as the sales numbers continue to decline. And this is all happening while the interest rates are dropping, guys. So how far are these interest rates really gonna have to come down in order to get people excited about buying again, especially at these prices? I don't think they can lower them enough to get people excited. You know, maybe if it were to go back to where it was at the mania of the market, if we were in the low threes, that would definitely get people excited about buying again, even at today's prices. But it wouldn't take long for us to be back to square one where prices get driven up so high again, where you know, even at 3%, homes are unaffordable. Just like we talked about in the 40-year mortgage video, start giving everybody a 40-year mortgage, how long before no one can afford that? Price reductions right now, you have 37.6% of listings as of July have a price reduction, which is the second highest on record only behind July of 2022. Which makes sense because in July of 2022, you had people just asking absurd numbers because the inventory levels were so low. People were kind of testing the market to see what they could get away with and realized they couldn't get away with a lot of these prices they were asking. And if you guys wanna know just how little home prices have actually gone up in the past couple of years, you need to look at where the market peaked back in June of 2022, okay? As of today, where we sit right now, home prices are only 1.8% higher than they were in June of 2022, guys. So a little over two years of so-called appreciation, and we're at 1.8%. So it's basically nothing. And when you factor in how much people have seen an increase in their property taxes and insurance and all of that, any little bit of appreciation you might have seen has gotten completely wiped out by those increased expenses to own your home. Another thing to realize is that prior to this whole run up in the housing market, prior to the pandemic, it was a normal year for real estate to appreciate anywhere between three and 5%, sometimes a little less than that in you know, markets where prices stay very low. But to have it only be 1.8% in the span of two years is abysmal. And this also confirms the other thing I've been saying, which is that I think the, the run-up in the housing market is over, guys. You are gonna see a few uh, sub-markets out there, like in the Midwest, where homes are still very affordable and prices are still gonna go up higher than that, of course. But overall, you know, this run-up in the market is done. So there's no reason for most people to have FOMO anymore, especially when you're starting to see the inventory pile up like it is, the level of price reductions being closest to the highest on record. That should give buyers confidence moving forward that there are gonna be far more and better deals to come in the future if you just wait. You know, even according to Redfin, they're talking about how people are out looking at houses, right? Like I kind of mentioned this earlier, but I'll give you the details. And, you know, they say Redfin's home buyer demand index has risen 4% over the last week to the highest level in two months. They try to make it sound like some, you know, big shocker that there's a bunch of people out there looking, but, you know, it's 4% rise in two weeks, guys. It's not a whole lot. And it makes sense with all the new inventory coming out in the market. I'm even going to open houses here every weekend. You know, they do a lot of open houses in this area I'm staying in. And I go to things just to see it, just out of curiosity. I look at things that maybe I would be interested in buying in the future. And just because people go in to see a property doesn't mean they're going to pull the trigger on one. And the data reflects that because they say that the uptick in home tours hasn't yet translated to more sales. Pending home sales are actually down 5.3% year over year, the biggest decline in nine months. And mortgage applications are down 8% year over year. But they say, well, don't worry about it because pending home sales are a lagging indicator and they may improve as home tours pick up. I think people are just getting more curious like me. You know, they're going out there and looking at seeing, you know, how desperate are sellers, asking some questions, you know, getting a feel for neighborhoods and stuff of places they might want to buy in the future. 
rather than being serious about pulling the trigger. I mean, I could be wrong. That's my feeling about what's going on though. But I don't really see anything happening right now that can get pe most people excited about buying at this moment, guys. Like, yeah, the, is the Fed set to cut interest rates pretty soon in September? Yeah. Is that gonna make homes a lot more affordable? No. It will lower mortgage rates a little bit, but you gotta understand that the mortgage rates we're seeing today are already reflecting the future rate cuts. So you're not gonna see mortgage rates drop a whole lot between now and the end of the year, unless the Fed starts emergency cutting. You know, next year could potentially be a good year to buy if we see enough inventory come online and rates go low enough. You know, for people that have been patient and been waiting, have your down payment saved, have good credit and are able to get good financing when the opportunity arises, you might come across some good opportunities. In fact, you're already seeing it happen right now. You know, a lot of sellers are getting very desperate. One of my viewers, Chris, sent me this listing out of uh, Myrtle Beach, South Carolina. Take a look at this. Right now, they're currently asking 265,000, right? But they listed it for sale back in the January of this year for 319,000, cut the price barely a month later after it was listed down to 315, did another price cut in May down to 305, and now they're getting serious in August after they basically wasted the whole entire home selling season with no deal, and now they dropped the price an additional down to 265,000. And this is somebody who paid $298,000 for this property in June of 2023, guys. So everybody who thought they were gonna make a fast buck in real estate, it ain't working. In fact, I saw a comment in my video about the 40 year mortgages saying, oh, one thing Michael's forgetting is that people don't stay in their homes very long. So, you know, you should save the money and get the 40 year mortgage. Your payment will be lower and then turn around and sell it for a profit a couple of years later. Yeah, just like this guy, you should do exactly that. That worked out so well for him, right? <laughs> I mean, buying for 298 and trying to sell for 265 if you're lucky, doesn't sound like turning a profit to me. And you see, that's the problem, right? That's the mentality people have like, oh, let me just get the cheapest financing option I can possibly get so I can turn around and sell it for a profit later. Like well, those days appear to be over for now, at least for the foreseeable future. And keep in mind, guys, just back in 2016, this property was only worth about 125,000. You know, that's what it sold for in 2015. And now someone's trying to get basically double that and they can't get it, but they paid more than double that. So they are literally the sucker holding the bag in this case. And I don't feel any remorse for people like that. In fact, I'm happy this is happening to people because those people at least will hopefully learn their lesson. Maybe not. Humans as a whole don't seem to learn from history. So I don't think this is going to make any difference. Doesn't mean we're not going to have a future housing crash again. You know, People are kind of dumb in this, in this regard. They don't learn from history. You know, we had a big housing crash just barely 15 years ago, and now all the same mistakes of the past are being repeated on an even bigger and dumber level in a lot of cases. So good for you guys who are losing the money. Enjoy that. Now, why do I think all this is happening? Why do I think we're seeing this sudden shift in the housing market? I think it's a couple of things. Like number one, you're starting to see the Fed getting a lot closer to their first rate cut and people are anticipating that as well. And thinking, well, maybe let me get ahead of the game and list my house for sale and maybe I can get out while the prices are still higher, right? That's one scenario. But you also have people that need to get out. You know, a lot of people have been losing their jobs this year. The layoffs have been pretty substantial. We've seen unemployment rate go up to 4.3% this year, whereas a year ago, it was in the mid threes. You had a transportation firm recently, Purdue Transportation. They laid off about 30 of their drivers. It's pretty much a surprise, you know, clean out your truck and uh, hand in your fuel card and your badges, you're done, just like that. No warning. One of the employees said that they were told the company was restructuring and doing away with its Midwest over the road division and the company was going to use outside carriers instead. We were told the remaining drivers were going to be moved to the company's short haul division. So this is in the Midwest guys where prices are still booming, right? But you have people losing jobs and that's not really a good thing for the local economy there. I showed you guys how beaten down things have gotten there since I used to live in the Midwest. It's not really getting better. So you think you're gonna see this continual rise in home prices there forever? Probably not. 
Here in the Bay Area, they're getting hit hard with a bunch of different tech layoffs. There was another company this week that announced they're going to be laying off 7% of its global workforce. Five Nine is the name of the company. As of the end of last year, they reported having about 2,700 full-time employees. So it'll affect about 190 people, 200 people are going to be losing their jobs now from this. But those people are going to be taken care of because they plan on spending between 12 and 15 million on severance plans and employee benefits related to those layoffs. So at least a lot of these people that are getting laid off are getting a nice severance package. That doesn't happen to everybody. I'm sure these truck drivers at Purdue didn't get that. And why are they doing this? The same reason a lot of other companies are doing this, guys. The CEO said, you know, it's because of decreased revenue and renewed focus on re improving profitability. That's why they're letting everybody go. People are just not making the money that they were before. And when businesses aren't making the money, they gotta let people go. And as you can see, it becomes this spiral downwards for a while. And that's where we're at right now. We're kind of just at the beginning of this downward spiral. And companies like this don't even make any money. They even had a 13% year over year increase in revenue. Okay, they made $252 million. And even though they made that much money, they still lost 12.8 million. You have Amazon CEO, they just announced that, you know, looking ahead a couple of years, he doesn't know exactly when, but there's going to be a lot of job losses in the tech sector, specifically when it comes to coding. He said that AI software developers will most likely have to innovate and update their skill set since being a developer in 2025 may be different than what it was in 2020. In fact, it is predicted that because of AI and the rapid improvements with it, that it could replace up to 300 million full-time jobs in United States and Europe by 2030, guys. Well, it's only 2024 now. That's five and a half years to go. And 300 million people could be out of work because of this. Now, yeah, sure, some of them are gonna improve their skill set and learn things they need to learn to keep their job. But a lot of those jobs just won't be necessary anymore if AI keeps going in this direction, right? So you're already starting to see the listings tick up now when people are trying to get ahead of it and try and take advantage of prices of where they are before they fall even further. And then you have people that just need to sell, people that are losing jobs like this that really have no other choice. And if we can expect a lot more job losses in the future to the tune of 300 million, then I think you know, when you combine that with the demographic crisis in this country, with so many baby boomers that are gonna be passing away in the next 10, 15 years as well, I really do think we are gonna see an avalanche of new inventory hit the market in housing over the next 10 to 15 years here, guys. And I realize people don't wanna wait, and you might not have to, because it's already pretty much back to normal levels now. Next year, it's almost guaranteed it's gonna be at or above normal levels, and that's gonna bring some good opportunity for people who have been hanging on and waiting. So if you ask me, the housing market is finally starting to crack in a way that's favorable for buyers. Don't be afraid to send your offers, guys, and if you have a real estate agent that doesn't wanna make your offers, then find someone who will because people like that don't deserve your business and at a time when there could be some good opportunities on the table you need to make sure you're trying to grab them if that's what you're trying to do so if you enjoyed this video make sure you subscribe to the channel and if you don't want to wait for my next video to come out check out this one on the screen right over here and i'll see you in the next one